Welcome back to the Dynoid Any% speedrunning guide. In this part we'll cover a quest called The Pit. Uh, it is a pretty short quest, but it has some interesting parts in it, uh, some unusual animation skips. So let's hop into the game and we'll see what it has for us. So we left off after killing the attackers on the trailer and uh, skipping the dialogue with Bracken. We waited for the pit quest to appear and switched our tracked quest to Holier Tunnel. As usual, hold Shift, hold W, press Space, hold D, mesh Space to skip obstacle, drink a potion to be faster, grapple your way down. Uh, be sure to walk inside this fence because uh, this place actually has a trigger which you can accidentally miss and with this curve if you get inside the fence uh, you reliably can hit it. If you are missing plastic like me you can try checking here and checking here. Which I still haven't hit. Uh, this is an example of an extreme bad luck. Usually you will get it from somewhere but we still have a plenty of time to find it, so it's all fine. Uh, in this part starts an incredibly long and skippable, and skippable dialogue, so we pick up household supplies and chemicals. If you have plastic, you will see a pop-up that uh, you can craft a new item, and the only useful thing we can do is clip outside of this door because we cannot interact with it yet but we have to. There's two ways to do it, you can try jumping into this window which is funny but unreliable way and more reliable way is to hang on this fridge right in this corner, turn right, clip outside and use grappling hook to get here. So, in this place you can try walking in those bags. Also, I've wasted way too much time because there is a trigger here which you can, you have to hit. Then, open the elevator, spam F to open it. Uh, fall to the elevator shaft, use grappling hook to cancel fall damage. Open next door and make your way inside. Ignore all the guys you found here, they won't do anything to you. Turn left here, select something automatic and wait here until you can see two guys spawn on the minimap right now. Kill them, grapple further inside, kill this guy, kill this guy, grapple further, kill those two guys, kill this one, kill those one, this one and this one. If everything is fine, the door should be opened. Also, uh, one trick to quickly reload your weapon, uh, especially SMG, uh, Put at, uh, pay attention at the moment where ammo indicator uh, will change from 23 to 30. So after it changes uh, you can try using kick and crouch at the same time. Uh, kick will cancel reward animation, crouch will cancel kick animation. So by quickly tapping it and also having to go crouch disabled you will do something like this. Uh, it is even better for SMG because as soon as you put a mug inside you can skip your cock animation just like this. So I did just that before but now I showed how to do it. Uh, basically how to do it, yeah. Interact with the door, skip, skip a walk at scene, and it will change to the next zone. In this zone, 
you instantly get into the unskippable cutscene. So you can just sit back and relax, enjoy this cutscene because it's pretty long. Oh man. So uh, if you have some unspent skill points like me for agility, uh, you might have. It might have been a good idea to learn them before, but why not do it right now? Uh, when we can lose our focus because nothing happens on the screen. So learn vault skill and learn free running adapt. So I usually don't try to learn vault on level four because it will be an extra menu opening. So I will try to learn it as soon as I hit level five. And only after this, I will learn both skills. Also uh, about power skill level, you don't want any of those skills. Every skill in this tree is trash for any percent speed run. This one uh, will give you increased chance to stun, and stun means uh, slow motion. Obviously, you don't want slow motion in a speed run. Uh, extra HP, you don't care about extra HP because you already have 200, and uh, having a set amount of HP is crucial for the final skip. Uh, melee throw. First of all, it requires stun. Secondly, it doesn't decide anything at all. In any percent, you don't care about melee throw. In, NG, uh, in no major glitches, it's a crucial skill. In any percent, you don't care about any of those skills. So, because of that, we completely ignore power, power level. So, after cutscene ends, we turn left and wait in front of container, which will open its doors shortly. Also, at this point, games strips away all our weapons, so that's why we had to level up unarmed damage skill, because we will punch everything right now. Luckily for us, punching will one-shot everything, so it's completely fine. Here is a blue container I was talking about. Turn left, camp outside, and start punching everything. If you had a bad, bad day at work, it's a perfect mission to let your steam out. Pay attention to everybody who might possibly be alive. Sometimes some ninja zombies may lie down quietly, so if you have a good headset, use it. Listen to zombies if you hear somebody screeching slowly. Like, I've missed somebody, I was hearing him behind, but was not sure. Only after kill the last zombie, this double crew starts. So, this is a good time to start searching for corpses. Uh, you want to find a metal part. I found a metal part, I am happy with it. If you haven't found it, it's fine. Uh, you still have a time later on to search this container. Obviously, uh, as soon as I found the metal part, uh, listen closely to the rise. As soon as he start, stops speaking, just leave wooden bodies and run towards this weapon. Uh, press F to pick a knife. Uh, it will also start another skippable cutscene. Uh, in this container, there is a demolisher sitting inside, waiting for us to kill him. Uh, he is basically one shot from every type of weapon, because this particular demolisher is extremely weak. Uh, we don't want to use uh, our knife here. Uh, we will switch immediately to the fists, because fists will deal most, more damage. Uh, and there is a two way how to deal with this demolisher. So first way is we will try to do a 
dodge to the right to avoid taking damage and falling down. This is the fastest strat, but it's slightly unreliable because uh, if you are not swift enough, uh, the monitor can turn to you and start charging again. So you have to, first of all, be able to dodge him, which is not always uh, an easy task to do. And secondly, you have to get close to him fast enough to send him into an AI loop and he will try to do a melee attack to you instead of charging so you have enough time to punch him in the head. Another strat is safe one but slightly slower. You can take a hit intentionally by doing nothing. Stand up and after that demolisher will won't try to charge you so you have a big window to run close to him and punch him into his face. I will try to do a dodge strat because obviously it's faster and if it failed you can always say it's an AI manip strat so it's fine. So I did just fine, punch him into the head and start running towards this pipe. Uh, pay attention to your minimap, uh, look at the closest viral and punch him. Somehow, uh, previous viral survived, so I have to turn around and kill it. Uh, then you have a couple of seconds uh, of time to breathe. After this, you have a seizure. Uh, you can skip this animation, uh, though it doesn't speed up the quest progression. If you haven't found a metal part, it can give you some time, some extra time to loot bodies. So. I failed the animation skip because I was talking about it. But anyway, I had metal part before, so I'm doing just fine. Anyway, have enough time to search for bodies. You can even see it preview that this has metal parts. Pick it up. Stand near this spot somewhere here. Rice will toss a medkit towards you. After we press F, we will start a skippable cutscene. So. Obviously, we will press a spacebar to skip it and we will start immediately running forward. Also, we want to slightly turn to the right, just a little teeny bit. Like this. Because by default, we will be running into a wall. Uh, pay attention to the minimap, we want to hit this checkpoint right, like this. Turn left, try to skip animation here. I failed, but it's fine. Press W once, press space, space here. And pray to the RNG gods to not hit the... So rice guys won't explode the barrel near you. Because if it happens, well, sucks for you. This barrel so far is the safest one. It can't possibly kill you. So we just run inside. Those are cosmetics explosions, they deal no damage. I am run, ran out of stamina, use kick. So over here uh, I have to jump down to the elevator shaft. Uh, at the bottom of it there is uh, water. Obviously falling into the water is not what I want because water is slow. However, there are two blocked windows uh, on which I can hang. I want to hang on the last one because obviously it's closer to the ground and uh, I want to hand it and release immediately so we can continue falling down. I'm doing this to cancel some vertical speed so I will be able to jump inside the door without hitting the water. So I jump down, first window, second window, I uh, hand on it, took some damage but it's fine, I'll get healed anyway automatically by the next cutscene, then I press C or crouch whatever the button for you to jump down and run forward. Jump here, jump here, jump once again. You can start running because there is deep water, you can't run in deep water, that's why we jump in. Jump on the roof and on this ledge to skip animation. This jump is kinda tricky, it's pretty easy to do but uh, you might accidentally hit animation. So basically it was the same thing I described in general movement. Uh, if you jump on this barrel and on top you will have an animation, so I am approaching from the side, I want to jump on this barrel, jump and turn left. Like this, to skip animation. Also, 
about this mach uh, machete. Uh, if you haven't damaged it, you have a good opportunity to do it now. Because uh, for some reason you cannot interact with this door right away, so you have uh, time to do a one hit to the wall to damage your weapon. Interact with door and prepare for a bunch of interesting diamond based skips. So in this part hold shift and w to move slightly forward also interesting part about interesting thing about this part is uh, you will be won't be able to run in this part so this is where dodging skill comes to play uh, you can use back dodge or side dodge to move slightly faster than just walking i prefer to use side dodge because i can see my visual cues some Runners prefer doing back dodge. I don't know why it makes no sense to walk backwards because you can't see <laughs> where you are going. So that's why I'm using side dodges. But you do you. Uh, whatever rings your bell, it's fine. For... So, this seizure is cannot be skipped in any percent category, unfortunately. So we use two side dodges, climb the bus, start side dodging again. Why it was important to have a metal part and damaged weapon? We will use weapon repair to skip seizure animation. So you see this small rock, start repairing weapon and move forward. After hitting the seizure, press left click to cancel repair animation. Then look at the minimap, you want to hit this small gap between walls. Then you might switch sides of dodging like this. As soon as you reach this line, which basically an extension to the fence, start repairing weapon again. Cancel animation to be able to touch again. You get a new quarantine zone, which will be used luckily for us. Then uh, get on this hill. This was a bad climb, but whatever. This seizure you can't take, uh, you don't care about skipping it because uh, it doesn't matter at all. It doesn't improve any uh, speed of quest progression in any way. So, uh, after you hit this uh, seizure, it will be better for you to drop your weapon because it will be just an unnecessary trash in your hands. So, toss it away and start holding spacebar because uh, after you pass out it will start a skippable cutscene. So skip this skippable cutscene and after that start meshing spacebar because it will start another dialogue which can be skipped. So now you have ability to take back your stuff, open your storage, press F once to grab uh, basically consum consumables, then uh, take your weapons, and after that comes interesting part. Uh, you, If you have a specific preference for order of your equipment, uh, you have to take items from storage in specific order, because, uh, uh, so, how it works. Uh, UV flashlight always takes the first slot in your equipment. There is nothing you can do about it. As soon as you press F to take all consumables, it will also take a UV flashlight. This is a piece of trash uh, equipment in solo game. It's kind of useful in multiplayer, but it just ruins your any percent run by taking your first inventory slot. So, for example, I like to have a speed potions in my second slot, so I pick speed potions first. Uh, then I usually have firecrackers in third slot. I pick, I pick those as well. Then I have grenades in fourth slot. I pick those. After that, I can take whatever I want because I am all out of slots. Then I swap UV flashlight with grappling hook, and I I have my equipment order in place. I'm perfectly happy with it. I can change my quest to on the hooks and save warp. However, I was unlucky with my plastic rolls and luckily for me, Spike is right in front of me. So I can speak with him, ask him for plastic and get debated again because he doesn't have plastic once again. 
drink a potion and quit out in shame. This is basically it for the pit quest. Uh, next quest will be the savers, uh, which is heavy on out of bound stuff and pretty tricky checkpoint stuff. So be sure to be to watch carefully this stuff and practice it as well. Luckily for you, uh, it can be restarted from quest the savers, so um, it can be practiced fairly easily. But uh, it will be in the next video and for this one thanks for watching and see you in the next part